So being an estate agent isn't always as glamorous as it seems and in today's video I'm going to run through a few positives and negatives of working in the industry so that everybody's more informed of the reality of working in real estate. But before we get into that make sure to hit the like button to help me push this content out to more people and to let me know that this is the sort of content that you want to see. I've also noticed that 85% of you aren't actually subscribed to the channel so make sure to go down there and subscribe. So I'm going to run through three positives and three negatives of working in the industry and there couldn't be a more fitting time than now to upload a video like this seeing that I haven't posted anything on the channel for a month so I'm going to give you a real rundown as to why I haven't done that and why certain bits of the real estate job have impacted like my YouTube channel, social life and other things like that. So starting with the first positive of the job is that every day is completely different. Now one of my biggest fears growing up was that I'm going to be stuck in an office behind the computer doing the same mundane tasks over and over and again. Not being able to leave the office and just stuck there in my box trying to produce as much value to the world as I can but ultimately not being able to move. So I became an agent because part of the job is obviously going out, meeting people, seeing different properties, I, I, even like the drive sometimes, the drive to a viewing where I've got a bit of music on or I've got a podcast on, I've got some time to think, that honestly gives me so much satisfaction. The fact that I'm able to get up and leave, get out of the office, go and view a property, do a market appraisal, go and meet a client for a coffee, spend some time with people rather than just in front of a computer on a Zoom call or typing up uh, messages on, on Outlook or whatever. The fact that I get to get out there um, and, and, and do my job physically in person with people and behind my desk because Trust me, sometimes I'd rather be behind my desk just cracking on with my paperwork or on the phone negotiating some deals than running out and meeting these people. But to have both and to have the option um, is great. And in agency, no day is the same. One day you're selling a three million pound house, having the best time of your life, and then the next day you've got no deals in your pipeline, you've just barely negotiated a deal on a 300,000 pound flat, there are vendors chasing you and chasing you and chasing you for fake feedback, asking why their property isn't selling. Everyone has an issue with you and it all goes wrong. But then on the other hand, it could be the complete opposite, as I said, dealing with a massive transaction, everything's going well, your pipeline's strong, people are coming to you, giving you business, liking you. Every day is different. You, you meet new people every single day, guaranteed. You'll speak to somebody new every single day, whether it's on the phone or in person. Uh, and and, and that's, that's, that's the main positive, really. The main sort of lifestyle or, or, or work lifestyle positive that I get out of agency. It's just having, um, well, just being able to experience something new every day. Um, and to be honest, that can both be a positive and a negative, but for me personally, mostly a positive. Now, positive number two is the earning potential. Now, a lot of people, I think there's a lot of misconception about earnings in the real estate industry, or at least being a real estate agent or an estate agent in the UK, um, because it really does vary quite quite considerably. If you're a prime sales negotiator in central London dealing with transactions that are you know, 10 million pounds, 15 million pounds, 8 million pounds, these sort of transactions, um, and you're getting paid good commission, you can really, really make a good career out of being a real estate agent. Um, you know, some agents in London are making £100,000, £200,000, even more sometimes, especially if you're working for yourself. Um, but even in a corporate structure, it's still possible to earn six figures. <clears throat> so. I think in the UK especially, a lot of people think that agents make no money, um, but that can also be true. Say you're an agent in an area where the average property price is 150,000 or 200,000 and your commission structure is rubbish and you work for a company that doesn't get a lot of instructions, doesn't do a lot of sales, then yes, you could be earning 16,000 pounds, 20,000 pounds. It all depends on which company you work for, which area you're operating, what volume your office does, the transactional values of that office, um, the, the fee as well, the average fee that the office charges. There are so many variables that will ultimately impact your earnings as an agent here in the UK. So, positive number two is that the earnings are genuinely unreal sometimes, but obviously there is also a uh, a sour twist that it's not as uh, something that's consistent if that makes sense and we'll come on to that a bit uh, a bit later but <clears throat> the short of it is you can make six figures in a corp in the corporate world and you can make much much more if it's your own agency so earning potential is there and trust me 
agency isn't rocket science as much as there is a lot of skill to it, a lot of um, sort of, it's, it's selling is an art at the end of the day, but if you really are consistent and hardworking and willing to learn, those three things will make you a very good agent and it's hard then, hard, really hard to not do well. So earning potential is there if you want it and that's the key thing, it's if you want it. Now the third and final positive um, before we hit the uh, depressing stuff is the networking that comes with the job. So I mentioned slightly earlier that every single day you meet somebody new guaranteed and especially working in London I get to uh, meet with and sort of interact with quite interesting people. Everyone here is so diverse obviously. Um, I've I've literally met people that have been actors in the past or uh, famous sports players or even current sort of famous people, actors, or even just somebody with so much life experience, someone with a really solid head um, that's able to give uh, give really good advice and have that sort of conversation. I've met people that are, are quite lonely and need to be spoken to and they in turn sort of tell you a lot about their lives and teach you that way. I don't know, I'm, I think I'm going a bit too deep, but you get the point. The networking opportunities that come with the job are crazy. You meet, you meet people in certain industries that you potentially might want to get into in the future, or you meet people that, that know things that you also want to know, or you meet people that know people that you want to know, and they're, they're basically because everyone at some point will buy a property, will buy real estate, mostly obviously, um, you're, you're likely to meet quite a diverse group of people and a lot of people, and it does open up doors quite nicely. So I think the networking side of real estate is, is very interesting. I don't know if I've ex explained that very well, but basically the short of it is you can meet a lot of people. Every day you're meeting someone new, you're speaking to someone new on the phone, and who knows, that person could ultimately be someone that um, you really, really pitch yourself to show off, and then all of a sudden you've got a life-changing opportunity that's come up at some sort of company or whatever it might be. Or it could even be a, like a lifelong, lifelong friend that you find or um, someone that inspires you, someone that you learn a lot from. So either way, you get to meet a lot of people and I think that can be very valuable in terms of growing as a person, benefiting somewhat from it and sort of learning as much as you can as well. So um, yeah, that's the third positive and again, a really, really strong one as to why people should be in the industry and why it can be a very good job. Now on to the negatives, the slightly less sunny side of being a real estate agent. So work-life balance, work-life balance. Um, that can be something that at the start of your career is inexistent basically. It takes uh, a lot of hours of, of hard work and determination um, to, to work as an agent uh, initially. I think over time, once you start sort of master your time management, diary management, admin, uh, even even every single task throughout the day, once you get once you improve by say three to five percent on that year on year, over time after say ten years in the industry, maybe you will have some sort of work life balance at an elite level if that makes sense. So um, over time, I think that work life balance, at least for me, will inc will improve. But at the moment. As a new agent, the work-life balance has been very, very difficult in terms of socialising, family, friends, um, outside sort of interests, gym for example. One thing that I really, really struggle with is finding time to go and exercise. And that's probably because I'm procrastinating throughout the day, not doing things as efficiently as I should do. Typical uh, for an agent to begin a call. Um, those sort of things really, really do need improving on as you sort of progress through the career, if that makes sense. So work-life balance initially is in existence. At least that's what I found, especially working in London, working in a high volume office where I'm having to deal with a lot of people, a lot of transactions, a lot of people are relying on me. I genuinely have like 100, 200 emails a day that I need to deal with. Um, so that can be a real negative initially, but I think in the long run, it does actually get a lot better. I haven't experienced that just yet, but I do believe that there is a way of making it better. And I've spoken about this so many times with colleagues and uh, managers in the business. So um, initially a negative in my opinion, but hopefully it gets a lot better. Now, negative number two, and I won't spend too much time on this one um, because I don't want to get myself in trouble, but there are a lot of politics in agency, right? Um, and that is really dependent case by case on, on where you work, to be honest, because the way we're paid as agents is obviously through commission, right? So it's a systematic failure in terms of behavior. We are paid depending on our performance. And what does that cause? 
really poor behavior sometimes and um, because ultimately I'm fighting against my colleagues or fighting should say competing against my colleagues to do deals so that I then get paid so there will be people that misbehave in order to do those deals and make more money so the way we're paid is a systematic failure in terms of the behavior that then follows right so there's a lot of politics in over over sort of applicants and uh, properties and everything else sort of involved in the job who gets this who gets that who gets this lead who gets that lead it gets a bit messy sometimes but there is a there is a way of getting it correct especially with really efficient management sometimes it comes from the top but sometimes it has to come from within as well it has to have say there's three negotiators in the office there has to be three individuals that are on board with working as a team working for each other and ultimately what that will do is improve the performance of the office um, and everything sort of comes from there but sometimes when there's three individuals that are all very high performers and want to do well for themselves it can create a, a very difficult environment so um, politics in the job can sometimes be very very overwhelming but obviously under some good guidance and some self-willingness from the individuals say in the office it can be also very good it can be a buzzing atmosphere it can be somewhere great where you just want to come in every morning and, and smash it as a team but as I say sometimes there is a lot of politics so that's just another negative to consider and you have to be very strong minded very strong willed because initially coming into the industry people will try and take advantage of you uh, disadvantage you everything so you have to be very strong up there uh, and, and believe in yourself and what you're doing and then hopefully you come out on top but um, yeah basically short of that one is there can be a lot of politics sometimes it's just how you react to that and how you sort of uh, find a good team around you to basically avoid it if that makes sense so the final negative is again surrounding the money so whilst money was my first positive or I should say my second positive um, it can also be quite a negative thing in the industry it's very irregular and it takes a long time to build so to give you an example, when I first started as a negotiator back in July, um, it took me absolutely ages to build a pipeline of business. So from July, my first exchange, my first deal sort of done, closed, exchanged we call it, was in December. July, I started December, my first deal exchanged. It took me that long to build a pipeline that's sufficient enough to allow for an exchange to happen. Of course, in December, I then had another sort of three or four transactions that dropped in that same month because the pipeline had build, been built over time, if that makes sense. But it took those first four to five months really to build up my pipeline of deals in order for, then to the, for those to then exchange. So exchange in December completed also in December, which means I was paid in January. So just because it completed in December doesn't mean I got paid in December I then get paid at the end of January so it takes a long time to get your money initially and a long time to build that pipeline um, so that's one part of it when you're starting but also once you're in it and once you're on the sort of um, grind and you've got a pipeline deals are exchanging and completing the money can be very irregular so one month you could be earning six thousand pounds and the next you could be earning two thousand pounds now in terms of financial planning and sort of having uh, really expensive sort of uh, fixed costs such as rent or a car payment or a mortgage payment or whatever that is or whatever it might be that can then become very challenging to manage if that makes sense you have to be good at managing your money and prioritizing saving having an emergency fund emergency funds for estate agents should be much larger than uh, a sort of typical individual on a fixed annual income if that makes sense because for us the salary can be so so irregular so the the, the monthly um, wage that we get if that makes sense so as i say it can be six thousand pounds one month it can be ten but then the next it could be one and a half thousand pounds two thousand pounds and what do you do if your fixed expenses per month are three thousand pounds you have to have to financially plan so for some people that's a bit too much and it's stressful well it can be stressful but at the same time if you're good with your money if you're well educated about finance and you're a good negotiator so you always do deals you can be okay but it's just one of the negatives of in of, of being in the industry if that makes sense money takes time to build initially and then well and, and to build the pipeline and then it's very irregular from there onwards so that really summarizes my views on some positives and negatives of working in the industry of course we haven't dived into every positive or every negative but I've 
try to pick out three from each side to sort of give you a well-rounded opinion of how agents operate and how, uh, what, at least what I feel and what I've experienced so far. And I've only been in the job for seven months at the moment. So um, I'm sure over time, say in five years time, I'll be able to give you a much better idea of what the positives and the negatives are. But my opinion thus far, after seven months in the industry, is what I've just told you. So um, I hope you've enjoyed that. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and on Snapchat, which I'll put up there. Um, I post sort of daily content on there um, about my life as an agent. So make sure to go and follow me on there. If you have enjoyed the video, make sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, of course. Subscribe if you haven't already. And with that being said, I'll see you guys next time.